Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about the different classes of nutrients. So there are six classes of nutrients that includes carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, vitamins, minerals, and water. Um, so here I included some of just the basic uh, functions and uses of the different classes of nutrients, but I will go into greater detail in future videos. Uh, but briefly, carbohydrates provide immediate energy. Uh, we also use some of the components from carbohydrates in the building of cell membranes. Uh, lipids, which is just another word for fat, those are synonyms. Uh, they also provide energy and are used in cell membranes. Uh, we also use them as the foundation for fat-based hormones. So hormones like testosterone, estrogen, and several others. Um, and our fat in the body provides insulation uh, for different organs and protection for joints and, and organs and, and helps to insulate to uh, maintain body temperature. Um, proteins are critical for building and repairing tissue. So building and growing new tissue, but also repairing existing tissue and maintaining existing tissue. Uh, it's used to make protein-based hormones, so like insulin, for example, um, and also enzymes, and it is absolutely necessary to maintain healthy muscles and good immune function. Um, vitamins do not provide any calories, um, so in nutrition, we were, we when we talk about something providing energy, what we mean is that it's providing calories. Uh, vitamins, although they make, make you feel energized when you eat them, especially by uh, B vitamins, um, they don't provide calories, therefore don't technically provide any energy. Uh, but vitamins are important for regulating body processes and promoting normal cellular function. So all the many cells in the body require a variety of different types of vitamins to help them um, manage and continue with all of their normal functions. Uh, same goes for minerals. They regulate body processes and promote normal cellular functioning, so very similar to vitamins. Uh, but minerals also have the added function of uh, providing components for certain tissues, like especially bone tissue. Uh, finally, water is our last class of nutrient, um, and water is critical in maintaining the normal balance of all of our different bodily fluids. Um, so like blood and interstitial fluid and, and all of the many fluids that make up the body, of course, the, the foundation of all of those fluids is water. So if we're not getting enough water, then those fluids become increasingly more concentrated and viscous, which can be really a problem. Um, and then also water is important for different methods of waste disposal like urine. Um, and then we use water for temperature regulation, primarily via sweating. Um, so our six classes of nutrients can be divided into macro and micronutrients. Now I've seen these two terms defined in two different ways. Okay, so the first definition is about how much of it we need in the diet. Uh, so macronutrients we need in relatively large quantities in the diet and micronutrients we need in relatively small amounts in the diet. So based on those definitions, uh, macronutrients would be carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and water because we need them in relatively large amounts compared to vitamins and minerals would be micronutrients that we need in relatively small amounts. Um, the other definition I've seen for these two terms is that macronutrients are relatively large chemical compounds. If we're looking at the actual atoms and the chemical compounds of the nutrients, um, that on that level, they're large and micronutrients would be relatively small chemical compounds. So by that definition, all well, five out of six of our classes of nutrients would stay in the same category. The only one that flips would be water. So water is a macronutrient by the first definition because we need a lot of it, relatively speaking, but it would be a micronutrient by the second definition because it's a relatively small chemical compound, just H2O. It's a very small compound compared to carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins, which are much, much larger chemical compounds. Okay, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.